Welcome back. In the last session, I covered NSDate and NSDate formatter. In this session, I'm going to cover NSArray. So I've created a new project here named it NSArray, single view application. I'm in the viewcontroller.m and I'm going to make some space under the view did load event. And I'll start with a quick and simple NSArray declaration. Just name it A. And like most of our objects, I have to allocate and initialize. NSArray, alloc, init with objects. Now there's a couple other ones we could init with an array. However, in this case, we want to init with objects. So I'll start with strings. We could put integers, floats, we could put other user-defined objects in here, ones that we've created in a class. At red at green and blue. And you'll notice the nil there. This signifies the end of the array and is necessary for init with objects. Now I'm going to output these just as an array. So at percent at a. Make it really simple. Just run it. And it outputs them in a bracket. And it calls the description selector, which is uh, part of NS object, on each of them just to get the string. And so we've got red, green, blue, separated by commas. If I want to output these in a different format, I would use each one individually, percent at, add a comma, and one more percent at, and specify them by index. Two. 0 refers to the first one, 1 to the second one, 2 to the third one. This is a zero-based index, like the strings. I'll just comment out this one so it keeps it clean. Run it, and we get red, green, blue. Comment this one out now. And there's a couple more useful things. So first, you can find the index of an object. And we can use index of object for that. So at percent LU for long integer and a index of object we'll find the index of the third one blue it's gonna be a warning in just a minute and that has to do with this being cast to a long integer and so we can just fix quickly by inserting the unsigned long save and run it and it comes back with two that's good because red is the zero index one, green is one, blue is two. So that's exactly what we want. Comment that one out. And there's two loops that are very useful for outputting the elements. I'll explore the two for loops. So if we use the typical for statement here, which is the C one, we can declare the index i is equal to zero and loop through it while i is less than the length of the array and that would be count and increment i now i'll use nslog to output the string now i have to reference it by index and i'll use i as the index save it and run it and red green blue that's good. Now this one you can run into a few problems if the number that you're using for the index goes out of range. So if it's not between 0, 1, or 2, if you end up with a negative 1 or 3 or 4 or 5, you will get an error. So I'll comment this one out. There is another way of looping through which is pretty safe for that. We've got the for in, the Objective-C fast enumeration. And I can specify the type of the object in the array, and I'll just say pointer s in a ns log percent at, and I'll use s for the object. Save it and run it. And we get red, green, blue. And with this one, we can't go out of range because we specify just the elements in there. So as long as the array is holding ns string, we won't get into any problems. So I've covered the basics of NSArray. Keep in mind that NSArray is a non-mutable array. So in order to change it, 
you have to actually redeclare the array with whatever changes that you want in it. So you release the old object, you create a brand new one with what you want in it to make a change. There is another array with the NS library, NS mutable array, which allows you to change individual elements in there, and there's additional functionality. And that's what I'll be covering in the next session.